Be real. Be you. I would rather know you, the real you, than the fake you. I, I don't think coattail riding and being a fan boy and uh, getting too caught up in the trap that is social media will help us do that. Today, I wanna to talk about social media, fanboys, and coattail riders. Because I've been around the high-end car world a long time. Forget about exotic cars, was around vintage cars, vintage racing, all that jazz. And when you get around any kind of world, it doesn't matter if it's horses, or boats, or airplanes, or cars, anywhere where something is flashy, and it requires money to be there, you're going to get what I just talked about, the fanboys and coattail riders, which is basically the same thing. Uh, and it's a trap. So I wanted to talk about that because there's a saying out there called, fake it till you make it. And I think that is a horrible saying that that exists. But what's worse about that are the people that take that seriously. Because that's effectively just being a type of a con artist. You're fake. You're fake. Your fake watches, your fake clothes, your fake life, your fake persona on social media, it's all fake and it's stupid. How many social media people do you guys see in the car world that something horrible happens in their life, yet they're still happy? Oh my God, I just blew up my engine. I've been working on this for two years, that's so funny. No, it's not. And I know you hate it, but you're not being honest with everybody. So why are you faking it? You can fake it in a big level. You can fake it and have nothing. You can pretend to be something you're not to go waltz around some exotic car thing or cars and coffee or vintage race or something. It's stupid. And you know, when I started this channel, I said the one thing I can do is be honest and uh, try to look out for young people in a way. And I'm going to do just that. So let's talk about cars and coffee. Cars and coffee really wasn't that much of a thing 15 years ago. That's kind of when that sort of started, that scene. And back in the 2000s, going to a cars and coffee scene was pretty cool if you were into exotic cars or sports cars because you'd have a lot of like-minded people that just want to enjoy cars for the sake of cars somewhere privately without making a big hubba blue. You go to a parking lot, you don't have to pay anything to be there. Maybe you have a nice lunch together and you go for a drive and you enjoy cars for the reason they're supposed to be enjoyed. Just for enjoying a sunny day with friends or family and enjoying driving. But cars and coffee became a social phenomena, especially in the last five to 10 years. And I really equate this with the advent of Instagram. That was kind of the big time. And then of course, as all the automotive social media people popped up and mostly the flex boys, you know what I'm talking about? Um, you know, Stradman, DDE, guys like this, where it's just a big circus. You know, I'm not knocking them, even though I don't like DDE. Um, but it's just a big circus. It's not about the cars. It's not about racing. It's not about building or restorations. It's not about just enjoying it with your friends for the sake of doing that. It's about doing it for social credit, for likes. Take your likes and shove it up your ass. Like, it's stupid. And now, so there's all these young people that look up to this and dream of having these cars and driving and doing and being an influencer. So they go sit on the curb by a Cars and Coffee video recording everybody going by. And then you get the idiots that have no talent that are revving Lamborghinis cold to the moon because they, don't, you know, they want to show off. And it's just stupid, you know? And then, you, so you record this crap and maybe you get a Mustang to wreck and take out the crowd. Yeah, it's kind of being a joke. But I bring this up. We all know it. We all see it. But I'm, I guess I'm just going to speak directly to young people. What are you doing? Why are you wasting your time? You like cars? Cool, go work on one. You can't afford a Lamborghini? Yeah, I get that. I was there. So work hard, buy a Miata. You know, Miata is always the answer. <laughs> Acronym, I don't care, buy some 80s piece of junk. Go buy a Porsche 944 and fix it up with your friends. Make real friends that are people like you, that are positive people that are going somewhere in life so you too can go somewhere in life. So instead of spending the time you are being a car spotter, which nobody cares about. All you're doing is helping these rich people and social media influencers be more famous -er. You're not doing anything for yourself. Yeah, okay, maybe there's one guy out there that started something they can make money on and he gets to ride coattails so well, people think he's one of them. They're not. 
What I'm saying is be true to yourself regardless of where you are or what you want. That doesn't mean you can't enjoy things like that. That doesn't mean that even if you can't afford something, you're not part of the car where you don't even have a car yet, that you can't walk or bicycle or go somewhere and enjoy it. I meet nice young people and oftentimes their family or parents or whatever coming by that just enjoy cars and want to go to cars and coffee and that's totally cool. But what I'm talking about are the people that take it to extremes. And beyond just car spotters and stuff, it's the people that get into these dumb little businesses, no offense, but I'm gonna call a spade a spade, where it doesn't seem like it's about the business so much as sucking up to rich people and being around a world that they have no part of because they either can't build or restore cars or trade up or buy their own or race. They're not, they're not part of the world, but they wanna be. And I'm, I'm not even gonna name it, but you guys know what I'm talking about. These little fly-by-night businesses that do craps. I'm just gonna set call spade to spade. Hey, I'm gonna wrap cars. I'm gonna wrap cars. Any rich people wanna let me play with your cars? I can wrap cars. I'm the best. No, you're not. <laughs> oh, wanna plastic dip that? Nope. <laughs> What else? Can I detail your car? Nope. Can do that just fine. I can do paint correction. Oh, you mean that bullshit new phraseology you made for just actually buffing a car, polishing it, or wet sanding it if need be carefully? Yeah. That's what the, all that was before somebody coined the phrase. Now, okay, there's some professional super guys out there that are good at it and rich people like to pay a lot of money for stuff like that because they can't do it themselves and apparently that's special now. It's just all a big dumb game and show, guys. So for the young people out there, like, Give it up. If you want to be something or have something, well then be it or have it. But don't fake it. Don't ride coattails. You know, just because you make friends and get to hang out with a bunch of people with expensive cars or I don't know, go ride on a yacht or stuff. What are you doing with your life? Who are you? Is that your identity? Because you've got fake friends that have stuff that you want you want, a, you want a lifestyle without actually having to work for it or be it. Why? Be true to yourself. I'd rather just go back to being me when I was 16, 17 years old and driving a $1,500 crummy four-door Volkswagen Golf and getting made fun of by rednecks in Tiffin, Ohio. Yeah, that's the way it was. I said it. Uh. <laughs> but I move on. If all this stuff goes away tomorrow, I'll, I don't know, fix up an old junky motorcycle or something. Be true to myself. And you know what? Sometimes I am gonna go hang around cars and coffee, go see friends, go for a drive in a car like this once I fix it up and get it back down on the ground because I'm not paying somebody else to work on my car. <sighs> you know? Or maybe I won't. Maybe it'll just be my uh, wife and kiddo driving our old, silly 1930s car that I don't drive faster than 45 miles an hour to some cruise in just because I enjoy American culture and driving a car and making friends with me and with family. I, I just, my piece of advice here is for young people, the internet's all fake. It's all fake. Be real, be you. I would rather know you, the real you, than the fake you. There's, there's plenty of boring, circle jerk rich people everywhere. Palm Beach, <laughs> Palm Springs, Palm something. <laughs> They have no life anymore. They can afford to do nothing. So it's like one drinking party after another. Oh, let's go to this car thing. Oh, let's go to this auction. Oh, uh, there's a new, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, trunk show at the jewelry store. What kind of life is that? What are you doing? What do you stand for? What matters to you? Who are you? How are you bettering your community? How are you bettering your world? I hope it's not just being a pointless protesting activist sitting in a street because you're not doing squat. No, I mean like, what are you actually doing with your own two hands in life to better the world or people? You know, the other thing is America right now, because of politics, which is basically thinly veiled communistic garbage that is trying to tear down the fabric of our society, is making young people hate the wealthy and hate the rich and hate success. Making them think that the whole system is rigged against them, regardless of who they are. Rigged against them maybe because of the color of your skin, or rigged against them because maybe you're poor. Rigged against them because you didn't have something else. Oh, give me a break. They're just trying to beat you down. Destroy everything. So by no means am I saying it's bad to have nice things. I think it's great to have nice things. I'd like to have more nice things. I'd like to do all kinds of stuff that's really expensive and difficult. 
And there's a simple reason for that. It's special. It's difficult. But that doesn't mean to not be true to yourself regardless of where you are and keep striving and working to go somewhere. It doesn't mean that all life is relative. It doesn't mean if you're riding your bicycle to work or you're driving your Ferrari, there's still people still want more, still hopefully want to make the world a better place and have a nice balanced life, family, friends, be loved, have meaning, fit in with the community, you know, have some good meals now and then, those kind of things, a warm place to sleep, maybe a, a country that isn't falling apart. Just don't be fake. Don't go ride coattails, be you. So another thing, which doesn't exactly relate, but I want to bring it up because this annoyed me. I had someone tell me, was it? I'm trying to remember what the exact example, but it, the phrase was, make them tell you no. There's some value to that phrase. It's like basically be annoying enough or pester somebody enough or direct enough or hard enough or forceful enough that people give in and relinquish to whatever you want. Now, there's some value to that. Maybe if you really want a job or an opportunity, you know, if you keep asking and you keep being the, the right person and doing something for something, eventually there may be an opportunity or eventually a place might say, okay, I'll give you a job sweeping the floors. Just leave me alone. You're obviously driven enough. That's where it's a good thing. But you got to be honest because there's a lot of people out there that, that won't let up that there's, they're either the wrong person to do something, period, or it, what they want doesn't really exist and they need to just give it up. But I remember there was somebody, I feel like it was a young Marine or something, I don't remember, that um, was forcefully trying to let me drive, let him drive one of my vehicles, special vehicles. Now, I don't know this guy, and it's pretty obvious to me that this young person had no respect for what the vehicle was uh, and would treat it with no respect. And I won't go into um, elaborate on that more because you guys are not dumb, you can figure it out. But I'm like, okay, first of all, I'm not going to help this person's life at all by letting them drive it. And I'm sure as heck going to risk a lot on my own. So basically would just be allowing this person to use me for fun and frivolity so they can think they're cool because they got to drive something. How about fuck no? I'm not doing that person a favor. I'm helping them just continue to be an idiot. Earn it for yourself. Get it. And, you know, the funny thing is I've oftentimes let young people drive my cars. The Blue Dodge Viper um, in the past with Genius Garage, a person that was a crew chief or a person that I really trust, I'd let them drive it to the races we were going to. I'm driving the big dumb truck and trailer. Nice to have transportation when we're there. So I let one of the students drive my big nasty Dodge Viper with no traction control and a lot of power and take one of the other students with them. And do you know how many times I had a problem with those students or how they comported themselves or drove it? Zero. Do you know how many of those times those young people disrespected the car or me or the team in regard to a situation like that? Zero. Now, the truth of the matter is with that, I chose the person or people that would get to drive the car because I knew who would actually respect it and who that experience would mean the most to. Hence why they have respect for it. And me. I'll be honest, not every student that's ever been at Genius Garage would have respected that properly. Maybe they weren't mature enough or didn't get it yet. And hopefully they're getting there. And I think that they learned a lot in their time. But I'm, I'm not going to let them drive my Dodge Viper. <laughs> not around a bunch of those students. Because there's still this thing called ego. <laughs> you know? Uh, especially for young people. Showing off and doing silly things. Maybe a bad judgment call. You know? They haven't learned that whole discretion is a better part of valor thing yet. So I don't have a huge point, but the fake it to the tell you make it thing has got to stop. And the people that want to do that, we need to see them for what they are. Just a fly by night, get rich quick, pfft, garden variety con. It's gross. It's gross. I've seen a lot. The people that go to things like that or try to go around concerts and money or everything like this and are parading around with fake watches and fake clothes and stuff and acting like they know everybody, I think this is the worst. 
In fact, it's kind of stuff like this and people like this that make me just not want to do car stuff and go outside anymore. And frankly, most of the time that I enjoy my cars and motorcycles, it's just by myself in the countryside going places that almost nobody will see me just because I just want to enjoy it for being cars. Now, of course, I'm sharing it with thousands of you all through YouTube, but that's what I've gotten to be doing. And I hope this uh, matters. Uh, I hope this gets a few young people to get their heads screwed on straight. Maybe spend less time trying to gain your social credit through likes and views and car spotting and fanboying, which I should probably define fanboy, B-O-I. The way I define it is the people that are so outrageous fans that have nothing going on in their life that they no longer think that they think one thing or one person or one group or one car or whatever or one lifestyle is so important that they worship it. Okay, I'm not a big religious guy, but let's just say a fanboy in the modern times on the internet, male, female, or whatever, is no different than somebody worshiping a false idol in ancient times. So that's all I got. Fanboys, troll away, comment. Um, let's find you. Maybe we can help fix you up. <laughs> Give you a tune up. That's it. I'll do another piece of advice, but I would rather everybody just be real. And regardless of whether you have a cool car or not, or money or not, or anything, I don't really give a shit about those things. I care more about the person. So, hopefully me saying that uh, get some people to uh, think it's okay to be them. And, uh, you know, we're all working on our own lives and trying to go somewhere and be better and grow. But uh, I, I don't think coattail riding and being a fanboy and uh, getting too caught up in the trap that is social media will help us do that. So, as they say, touch grass, guys. See you next time.